How's it going everybody? A couple weeks ago we came to the park to test out mobile radio antennas. It was all Comet radio and the winner from that was the Comet SBB-5. So I brought back the SBB-5, I brought back the signal stock for a good, you know, smaller profile antenna. But I also picked up one that you guys all recommended which is this Tram 1180. This is a dual band. Uh, it's supposed to be advertising 2.4 dB gain on 2 meters and 4.5 dBD of gain on, uh, on 70 centimeters. But I've also got the compact antenna, which is the lowest profile of any of the antennas I have. I talked to the creator when I was at Hamvention this year. He let me have this one for free, so we're gonna do a test, right? Numbers don't lie. All these antennas transmit and receive against the compact antenna. We're gonna find out who's the best, so let's get started. All right, so if you're new here, this can't be any simpler. I've got a two meter, 70 centimeter mobile radio in my truck set to low power transport because we want, we want to see granule numbers, right? Something that either they're making it or they're not making it back to my home station where I'm running a software defined radio that allows me to record the audio that it hears and also a signal to noise ratio and DB ratio for signal intensity. The higher the number when compared against all other antennas, that's gonna be the best as far as signal strength. So it's an apples to apples comparison. We take one radio, we don't change it. The only thing we're gonna to change today is the antenna. So that's gonna be our variable. All right, let's get started. All right, first up is the defending champion from the last video, the Comet SBB-5. This is a long antenna for a truck, not something you wanna drive through a, uh, a drive-through, but here we go. First test, this is the Comet SBB-5, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu at 2.56 p.m. All right, 70 centimeters. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is the test for the Comet SBB-5, low power at 2.56 p.m. Here is the Comet SBB-5, weather stations completely pegged. Good job. Now, I, I will say, as, as far as performance goes, it's really hard to beat the Comet. It still is. It's really nice to just leave it connected to the radio, I, let, I use that to do the scanning. It uses GPS to find, you know, the, the local repeaters. Works great for that. July, it's like 82, and then it's 84, and then But it's long. It's long. Next up, holdover from last episode, the signal stock. The flexi antenna. I usually leave this on the truck just because I, I'm not scared I'm going to hit a drive through or a parking garage and damage it. Even if I do, this isn't that expensive an antenna. There will be links in the description for all these antennas if you want to check them out. Just know I am an affiliate of Signal Stuff, maker of the Signal Stock, and also the creator of hamstudy.org. Hey, if you are considering getting your ham radio license, go check out hamstudy.org. Highly recommended. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is the Signal Stuff, Signal Stock coming at you, doing an antenna test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu at 2.59 p.m. And this is the signal stock on 70 centimeters. Antenna test, antenna test, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Here's an audio test on weather received. So we're peaking max strength receive on the signal stick. Tuesday, partly cloudy in the morning, becoming mostly sunny. Highs 97 to 105. All right, next is the Tram 1180. This is available on Amazon, links are in the description. This was the fan favorite from you guys. This one was really a, uh, an interesting antenna. You guys recommended it. I had not really, well, I've heard of Tram and I actually have a couple of antennas, but I've never used one of their longer two meter, 70 centimeter antennas. So let's, uh, let's try it out, see how it performs. Here's the Tram antenna, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, antenna test, antenna test it. 3.03 p.m. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. All right, now 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is the Tram, Tram mobile antenna at 3.03 p.m. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. And let's get that uh, quick weather receive. Nope, that's not it. Test for the Riverside Mountains. Tuesday, mostly sunny so the bar is full, no flickering at all, completely solid. Areas of west 10 to 15 miles an hour, becoming southeast 10 to 20 miles an hour. 
20 miles an hour with gusts to 40 miles an hour in the afternoon. All right, our last antenna is the Compact Tenna. This is the 2 meter 440 plus model. So let's try it out. Again, the creator and I have been exchanging emails and he did give this to me for free. So, you know, just for objectivity here. I'm told after a QST article, they, they reviewed this, they use this to actually work an FM satellite because apparently this isn't a null at the top. This works kind of as an omni, an everywhere omnidirectional or, you know, um, cross polarized. So that's something interesting. I may do that in a future video. Let's see how it performs though on this video. Can't beat the low profile, super low profile. Here's our next test, Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu on the Compaq Tenna. This is on 146.450, this is two meters at 2.52 p.m. All right, that's the two meter test, 70 centimeters, also on low power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu, this is the Compaq Tenna on 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu test, 2.53. This is the compact antenna on weather. Let's listen. Clear. Low 67 to 76. Thursday, sunny, hot. Eyes 104 to 105. S5, S6 peaking. Clear. Low 67 to 76. Closest to the signal Friday, stock, which was about right here. Eyes 107 to 113. Friday night, clear. All right, so what do you guys think? What do you think is the best performer out of the bunch? I think performance-wise, you can't beat the tram or the Comet, but they're also impressively long. I still really like the signal stick, signal stock. It just works pretty middle of the road, but on a truck, it's nice and durable. It can take a couple of hits. In fact, I've definitely hit this one on some drive-throughs. You can see a couple of nicks there. I, it just stays on the car most of the time. Compact antenna though, if you want the absolute like smallest footprint, so here's the compact antenna, right? Here's the signal stock up against it. So compact antenna, really, really quite a, a small little unit. It also kind of blends in. People don't, it doesn't draw a lot of attention if that's something you're looking for. It obviously is not a traditional vertical omnidirectional, right, where the knolls on the top. So. I think I'm going to do some more videos on this, particularly playing around with satellites, because how fun would it be to just be able to do satellites in the car, at least some FM satellites, on my, uh, on my ICOM 5100 here. So yeah, let's roll those numbers and uh, you tell me in the comments what you think. Well, these numbers were simply shocking for reasons that we're going to talk about right now. For you eagle-eyed viewers that watched my last antenna comparison with the Comet antennas on the truck, you probably noticed that, just take the SBB5 for instance, you saw a major drop in the performance from the last or the first video with Comet antennas versus today's video. And I'm not exactly sure why. I did move the truck here versus it was here the last time. Further, the truck was rotated. The face of the truck was pointed more towards where my house is, which is the direction I'm showing right now, versus when we shot the video today with the tram and the compact antenna and all the others, the truck was perpendicular to that. So the side of the truck was now facing towards my home. Again, pictured here. I'm happy in the sense that we were able to get 70 centimeters working. I am surprised that the values were so different on two meters. What's our goal here again? Our goal is to get a reading with every antenna if possible, and then comparing them against each other in the time span of this video. Going forward, now that we have 70 centimeters able to be heard by my receive station, I'm gonna leave the truck in all future videos in the position it was in today's video. That said, let's look at today's numbers. The compact Denna was number one with a considerable dB improvement over that of the closest antenna, which was the tram in third place, followed by the signal stick, and then the SBB5. The SBB5, again, was the best performer before, and the signal stick did not work as quite as well as the SBB5. Could I have smacked the SBB5 around? Maybe, I don't think I did, but hey, that's the numbers. Now, flipping things over to 70 centimeters, the Tram 1180 takes the lead, followed by the SBB, then the compact antenna with the signal stick being the 
worst performer, which based on size, I'm I'm not too surprised by. That was kind of what we got the last time or didn't get because the SB5 was the only one that made it on 70 centimeters. Now, cutting the data another way, here is the price of the antennas sorted from the cheapest antenna to the most expensive. The signal stock is the cheapest at $35. Again, this is one you can beat up. That's kind of why I mention it all the time. Next, though, is the Tram 1180, which performed very well on on two meters and decently on 70 centimeters, followed by the SBB5 and then the compact antenna. If you want peak two meter performance, at least when we're comparing these antennas against each other, the compact antenna was the winner on two meters, but was middle of the pack-ish on 70 centimeters. It was really just one or two dB above or below. So at the end of the day, the decision falls back on you, which one fits your budget and your use case. So I also heard your comments on the SWR for all these antennas and the antennas from last time. I did a sweep this time, so here they are, um, overlaying them now. Here is the uh, SBB5, pretty good, right about where I wanted for simplex testing for two meters and 70 centimeters. This is the tram, also about in the wheelhouse. The signal stock was a little high on two, but it was also pretty good on 70 centimeters. So when I say little high, I'm talking like two, uh, two to one SWR and higher than that. It's right around two. The thing to keep in mind is a lot of these antennas, handhelds, mobiles, you name it, they, they tend to favor one band versus another band. So the signal stock's just kind of like in the middle. It tries to do a pretty good job of splitting the difference between both of them. So generally that's why I usually leave it on because it's just good. It's just good for driving around again, using it in the vehicle and whatnot. And here's the compact antenna. So that's a whole different animal, right? I don't know how, you can't really adjust the stinger on that one where the SWR is at. It's pretty much tuned from the, the factory when you get it from Compact Tenna. At least that's my understanding. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching these a whole lot. I know a lot of you do encourage me to do different antennas and all that fun stuff, so keep them coming. I absolutely love to test out antennas and radios in the park, in the real world. This is a just an everyday man type of test. Hopefully you find this valuable. And again, your feedback is always appreciated. So if you give me a thumbs up, that means a lot. If you subscribe, whew, even more and if you click that bell so you get notified when I go live and post videos like this man you, you just get a hundred internets from me to you uh, if you do that I'm Josh KI6NAZ have fun out there with your radios and I'll talk to you real soon 73